In this video, I'm asking, can rivals save us from the cardboard crisis? fans Robin here. Um, unless you've been living under a stone in Underworld's land uh, you will have noticed that Harrow Deep has arrived and there's been lots of talk about the rules and things. Pete and I'll be following up our initial thoughts on the rules very soon but there's also been an awful lot of talk about the price. Um, I think it's uh, £65 UK and it equates into all sorts of large, much larger dollar prices particularly in Australia and a lot of people are just saying that's too big a price to swallow. I don't really want to get drawn on the rights and wrongs of, of the price uh, because I, these things I think I said in my previous video the price is what it is and obviously we all have to make decisions based on what else we do with our lives just whether we can afford it you know we got we, it, it's there it's out there the price is out there and it is an issue for some people and, and possibly rightly so uh, but I wanted to talk about why that might be uh, and I don't think it's just that Games Workshop think they can charge as much as they possibly like for a product. I think there's a little bit of that. Um, but you, if you're interested in board games and um, have been following board game, uh, what's been going on with board games, you'll know that the price of cardboard has rocketed uh, over co due to COVID uh, and so the supply chain problems are causing an issue with all this kind of stuff. And, and say, um, I was looking at something, doing a little bit of research, and the, this is admittedly is recycled cardboard. But the price of recycled cardboard from the beginning of 2020 to the beginning of 2021 had gone from £10 or whatever it is they measure in, £10 an elephant, uh, up to uh, £120 an elephant. So, you know, that's a massive, massive um, increase in, in the price of cardboard. And I'm guessing that's probably continued to go up. And I know that there are Kickstarters asking for extra money uh, from their supporters because they just haven't allowed for the uh, rise in shipping costs and the rise in the cost of cardboard. And I know that um, as Modi through AMG and Fancy Flight have hiked their prices, I think I felt like I saw something saying that some of the Legion stuff was going up 40%. So the rise, although we do get a little bit sick of Games Workshop rising their prices all the time, I think it's inevitable um, because of the global situation we've been in. I know Games Workshop posted record profits, so it feels a bit like a kick in the teeth. Uh, but I think it is inevitable because that's just the way things work. I was driving past my local petrol station the other day, or gas station for those of you watching in the US. I know. I don't know whether you, those of you who live abroad know, but the UK had a bit of a petrol crisis uh, a couple of weeks ago where uh, people were queuing up for hours to get it because there was some sort of demand issue, a supply and demand issue. And uh, I noticed that the garage, admittedly one of the more expensive garages in the area, but I noticed that they basically put up the price about 8 9 p a litre um, on the price of gas, which is very kind of them. So again, their supply issues, they're, they're, they're pushing on to us. I had to recently renegotiate my gas, pro uh, gas bill on my uh, utilities uh, supplier. And again, um, they put it up. I think they put it up by a third. So again, they're, they're having to pay more for the price of gas. So that obviously they don't take that on the tune themselves. That gets passed down to me. And if Gay's Workshop are having to pay more to their suppliers for, and the, uh, for their things, they're going to kindly pass that cost on down to me because that's just that's how life works. So the price of cardboard then is causing us a problem in, in uh, board game land and underworld land, particularly the games which are heavily card based. AMG and Fancy Flight, they use a lot of cards and things in, in their games. Obviously it all comes in boxes. GW have a lot of books. Um, but they, this Underworld is pretty much the only one that is kind of entirely reliant on card stock. I don't know how games like Magic the Gathering and Pokemon and things like that are dealing, dealing with price-wise because they're all card stock. At least we have got a miniatures element here, which I will come on to. I think might be the saving of, of Underworld um, if, it, if, it, if, if the prices keep continuing to rise because it doesn't have the following of those two games and they, they can uh, absorb a, a bit of, um, bit of leaving, people leaving if, um, if they, the price gets too rich for some people. So lots of lots of games going up, as I've said, and I suppose life being what it is, when the price of fuel goes up, I start to think about whether I can walk somewhere or, or do less trips when the price of utilities has gone up. Normally last year we obviously were at home more because it was locked down, but I was kind of like, well, we're not going to get cold because I will have the heating on in the daytime, um, which we don't normally do. But um, this year I'm looking at the price of my gas bill and I'm thinking, well, I'm not sure I can I can manage that. Um, you know, we can't have to afford to have the whole gas on. I haven't got the heating on in here uh, at the moment. Uh, and so they're the decisions you kind of have to make. And obviously different people are at different places on the ladder. And, um, you know, you, but you are making those decisions. And I guess we're all going to be making those decisions about whether we can continue with what games we can continue, uh, depending on how much these games are going to cost. 
Um, and it really depends on, on that the decision will ultimately come down to how important Underworlds or whatever game you're looking at is to you and your free time and your hobby and your state of mind and all that kind of thing. And your pink balance, ultimately. I don't know how far Games Workshop look ahead when they're doing this stuff. I mean, we talk about their, their big design cycle, but I don't know how much they actually look ahead at sort of trends in costs and things and whether they can see um, what might happen in the market. One would hope they do some of it. I don't know. Some of this is, seems to be fairly unprecedented. So I don't know how easy it would have been to predict. But I do wonder whether Rivals format is a way of shifting us away from this kind of uh, got to catch, catch them all mentality because ultimately... We are kind of looking at a situation, I guess it's always been the case, but with the price increases, it's more and more in danger of becoming a pay-to-win situation, uh, which I think you do get to an extent in Magic, Magic the Gathering and, and Pokemon, where people just, people with all the money can buy the best, better cars more easily. In this case, it's getting to the point where buying all the warbands all the time is perhaps becoming untenable, and Games Workshop have now announced this uh, Rivals format. Now, the Rivals format... Uh, Pete and I will have, have our reservations about it. We have another video about that, which you can look at. Uh, we do have a reservation about it. I've, well, we have now played a couple of the new Rivals decks. Uh, admittedly, they are just faction decks. They're nothing special. They've got a specific Rivals deck that they've talked about, like the Silent Menace deck. Um, but it was a pretty balanced game. It was only, we, only, we literally just picked them up and played them, so we didn't really look into it and think about what synergies and strategies there were in, in there, like we normally do. Um, and um, But the game was pretty balanced. So you kind of feel like actually if they can make a really solid format of rivals and have a good chunk of warbands, 10, 15 warbands, which are fair and balanced in the rival situation, in the rivals format, then suddenly they've got this whole new system that everybody can play and enjoy. They can run tournaments for, I know championship is probably always going to be the gold standard, but um, you will be able to maybe in a club or with friends just have one copy of Underworlds. I mean, they were talking about uh, a cardboard crisis is just a selection of boards. I think these are some of my name picked all together, but that's just that's about two thirds of my pile of boards. Um, if you've got a club or something and they've got boards already, you can just buy one copy of Harrow Deep for the for the rules and maybe the tokens, and um, you can you can go with your boards and play. You rivals format. Just oh, I'm just going to buy uh, whatever the pirate things that are coming soon. I really like I really like the pirate aesthetic. I'm just going to buy that and play it uh, with rivals with my friends, and you'll be able to. Assuming that not everybody's running to to, to catch them all, um, which you know some people will, some people will still be playing championship, but it is all going to depend on your um, preference, I suppose. Uh, but it does mean that a strong rivals format could actually mean the saving of um, sort of underworlds because if everybody leaves because they can't be if they can't afford or they don't want to afford um, keeping up with. The championship format and the continually rolling chain of car stock but they don't have to they can just buy the warband that they like and play that pretty much with the existing stuff they have which i think is, is really great one thing that i do think slightly odd um, i suggest that games workshop haven't really thought about this sort of crisis uh, of cardboard is this decision to go to two core sets a year i can see it might make a sense from shipping point of view but if cardboard can go up and up i don't really need more tokens or it's more boards, but I definitely don't really need more tokens. I've got hundreds of tokens. I mean, this, I don't know where these came I think these came out of the starter set um, and they're still not punched out because I don't need to punch them out because I've got literally hundreds and hundreds more than I need of the tokens. And so that is a bad thing because I don't want to be paying 10 times more for my cardboard that I don't need for the, for the original lot that I paid where I did need it. Um, so that is a negative thing, and uh, you know it is perhaps going to if it's going to push the cost of that box up, then I don't really want to get I don't really want that to be passed on to me. But unfortunately, if I'm going to keep paying those cost sets, it's probably going to be. So there is it is a bit a bit double edged this this um, new format. But I'm hoping rivals hoping rivals means that I, people won't feel in, inclined to keep chasing after the, uh, the the key cards of the meta. And I suppose that's really the message of this video. Um, I'm hoping Rivals format is going to be good enough that people can still double in Underworld, dabble in Underworlds, and they will keep coming back. They'll keep investing a little bit of their money in Underworlds, so that under Games Workshop see that Underworlds is, is worth persevering with. So I don't know. I, I just hope that with the Rivals format, if the Rivals format is good, then people will still feel comfortable investing a little bit of the money that they can afford into Underworlds to buy maybe one or two warbands a season and play in a tournament with them that people are, you know, that is represented. Vanguard, it's really hard to know whether Vanguard was ever going to be a thing uh, with COVID, but this feels like it could be more of a thing. It's certainly more scalable. You don't have to, you're never going to have to uh, 
not be able to use your cards because you're never going to have to get them all to be to be better than the person next to you. You just literally uh, buy the warband that you like. So it makes it a bit more scalable. So like I say, people could just buy one or two warbands, uh, find some with the boards and the tokens, and play games, which I think is is really nice. I hope you found that interesting. Do you agree, or am I just talking about my bottom? Is the cardboard crisis something that Games Workshop? Uh, should be thinking about, are thinking about, uh, is it going to have a massive impact? I mean, games which aren't shy about putting their prices up, we know that. And uh, you know, are we going to find that the prices go up and up and up? I know a lot of you are out already. I don't really know where my ceiling is for what well, I'm getting out of this game. Um, it is about the only game I play with any, any sort of certainty and regularity. I almost certainly would stop buying new legion stuff and new uh, marvel, marvel crisis protocol stuff if if the price escalates because i really don't use those components because I, I buy them for painting uh, so that's a bit of a bind so actually uh, there um is where products like this are so good because there's a, a coupling between plastic and cardboard there that if it escalates the price and i only want one of them and i'm a bit stuffed um but uh, at least at least the whole game isn't all cardboard that's all i could say so there you go, that is my thoughts on cardboard, uh, the cardboard crisis, and whether whether it will improve Underworlds, I'm, I suppose it all, it's all gonna hinge on whether the Rivals format is good. I think I've said that about 20 times now, so it's probably time for me to stop. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed listening to this. Um, if it's your first time listening, do click like and subscribe so you can hear more Underworlds content, more general musings on the game um, and games in general, and uh, we'll see you soon somewhere with the Ages of Sigmar. <laughs>